put it on the inside of your lapel, I think it'll pick up better. Does that matter? That's on. I'll just speak loudly. So, I'm, uh, I'm Joe Fox, I'm the business and major manager of the uh, Department of Economic Development. And I oversee a group of programs uh, that were created in 2011 and created by legislation known as the Business Innovation Act. Um, the Business Innovation Act was passed and it provides funding through these business innovation programs and uh, the aim is that this funding uh, supports entrepreneurship and small business innovation, uh, research and development here in the state of Nebraska and just generally the advancement of technology. And again, the Business Innovation Act created funding programs uh, to, to uh, meet that mission. If you, I'll, I'll describe, uh, I'll go through all the programs here as we go through the presentation, but if you look at the business financing continuum uh, of either early stage technology development or uh, uh, an early stage startup business, you see that, that valley of death uh, where you're going through the discovery stage, proof of concept. The idea behind these programs is that they help companies and technologies through that valley of death to, to improve product development to eventual profitability. So I'll first talk about the, the grant programs and then I'll talk about the investment program which was uh, mentioned by, by Brock earlier. Um, but uh, the, the first program we have is a uh, grant matching program is Nebraska SBR, SQTR, uh, phase zero program, as we call it. So this is uh, just funding as long as you as a company plan on doing at least 51% of the work in the state of Nebraska, funding to help with the application, help with the federal application. So the eligibility requirement is that you're a, you know, you're a SBI or SDCR eligible company. Um, again, you plan on doing it and uh, pledge to do at least 51% of the work here in the state of Nebraska. And if so, you, you apply to us, the Department of Economic Development, um, basically give a real brief uh, summary of what, what solicitation you're applying for, um, what, what you plan on having in the application, um, again, very high level, and then what you plan on using this $5,000 grant for, with hiring a grant writer, doing some additional research, things like that. There's, there's no matching component to this. It's just uh, you have to prove to us that you you went ahead and applied for the federal solicitation. Uh, once that's done, we can, uh, if the grant is approved, we can reimburse the five thousand dollars to defray some of those costs um, of applying for the federal SBIR. We realize that the state is a, a very competitive process, an arduous process, and we want to help uh, incentivize more SBIR, SDTR applications uh, with with the work being done here. Now, if, if, if you as a company uh, wins uh, federal SBIR, SCPR, phase one and or phase two, uh, and again, pledges to do at least 51% of the work, we've got a, a matching program that can match um, up to 65% of the federal work with a maximum of $100,000. And that funding, uh, again, matches the federal grant, but it can be used for gap funding in between phase one and phase two. It can be used to expand your research or expand the scope of work. And beyond phase one, uh, you know, it matches phase two. It can be used for you know, commercializing the technology. This program, uh, you know, in Nebraska, we're, we're considered an underserved state um, by the SBA or SBI or NCTR. And uh, you know, this, this program is actually fairly unique in the country. There's only a handful of other states that have similar matching programs. Um, and since this program has been in existence, we have seen a little bit of uptick in the number of applications uh, that we can serve. We'd like to see more of those. So if you, if you are interested, we, uh, we invite any, uh, any questions, uh, if you need more information, please reach out to me on my contact information uh, later on here in the presentation. Uh, but we, we'd like to see more SBIR and CTR. So that's the, the SBR, SCTR matching program um, related to federal money. And we also have uh, state dollars that are just uh, solely 
focused on Nebraska, small businesses in Nebraska, technology development. Um, the first of those is the prototype of pre seed grant. This is a grant for small businesses, and that's defined as less than 500 employees uh, with their primary operations or headquarters in Nebraska, and uh, who are developing a prototype of new technology, a product, or process. Um, and this, this grant is a matching grant, so most of these grants outside of SBI are, are meant to be uh, basically gap funding. You know, we're, we're not meant to be the primary investor in on the project or the deal. We're meant to uh, you know, close that gap as, as companies uh, developing that technology or, or trying to go to market. In this case, uh, the matching requirement is 50% uh, on traditional projects. And that's defined traditional projects as those not, not agriculture. Agriculture related has a priority, and so the matching component goes down to 25%. This funding is for development of a prototype of technology. Any, any costs or expenses related to that, um, and we can grant out a max of $150,000 for that development uh, per project. Um, and as Rock mentioned, you know, commercialization program, receipt program, uh, invest grasses industry agnostic. We're also industry agnostic in, in these programs. We fund everything from medical device related technology to ag technology to uh, software. And this, if you look at the, the uh, range of programs we have under the Business Innovation Act, prototyping is probably one of the more competitive. Um, that being said, we, uh, we generally grant out about a million dollars per year, and this calendar year, Run on calendar year. This calendar year, we're, we're on pace to get out of that. So we've got about, about a quarter of that money um, thus far. So uh, another uh, grant program is the academic R and D grant. This has a little bit different focus um, compared to the prototype. So the prototype grant is mainly focused on developing a technology that is going to be commercialized. In fact, with the prototype program. It, uh, a company wins one, we enter into a contract with them, and part of the contract is that the company will make a good faith effort to commercialize that technology. Academic R&D is a little bit different. The focus of this program is industry, university, or college, state college um, collaboration and relationships. So this grant is for businesses that have a physical presence or are operating in the state uh, who are utilizing faculty or facilities at state college or University uh, for applied research or development of new products, or who are uh, utilizing using intellectual property generated in public or private college or university here in the state in for applied research and development of new products. There's no requirement uh, through this grant program that the company make it a good faith effort to commercialize the technology, but that does make for a stronger application. Um, so this is over, this program uh, operates over two phases. There is a first phase uh, program that, um, where we can grant out a maximum of $100,000. And uh, the matching requirement here is uh, one to one, so it's higher than the prototype. Um, but again, the focus of this is that we're, we're seeing applications from industry who are collaborating with, with state colleges. Uh, if the company receives a phase one uh, grant, and meets all its self-defined milestones uh, in the grant, finishes the project, and then, it's, then the company's eligible to uh, apply for phase two, which can be to a maximum of $400,000. So uh, this program is, is competitive. We, we generally grant it out um, a million, um, sometimes more. We have the flexibility to go into other programs where we're underutilized and take funding from that if need be. Um, but on, you know, the, the average, since these programs have been in existence, we've been granting out um, approximately a million dollars per year. So that's, that, those are the grant programs. Now I'll touch on the, the commercialization or investment, seed investment program we have. This, um, this has a lot of the same requirements as the prototype program, but this, this is not a grant. As uh, Brock mentioned earlier, uh, this is the, the program that we collaborate or we partner with Invest Nebraska on. They're our contractor. So this is uh, an, 
investment um, generally made is a convertible note or an equity investment. It's for small businesses with again, less than 500 employees. The company's got to be here in Nebraska with their primary operations or headquarters. Um, but you can make an investment through Invest in Nebraska of up to half a million dollars. And this is for taking a technology that, that has primarily been completed or prototyped and commercializing that technology. In some cases, if the technology's already been commercialized, um, the company's looking to enter new markets, that's, that's also uh, applicable on this, uh, with this program. So the matching component is 1-1 one one here. Again, that drops down to 25% for value-added agriculture-related projects. Um, but the, you know, the investment can be used for uh, you know, working capital, for marketing, hiring sales folks, things like that, whatever activities are related to commercializing um, technology. The, the application process works is the other applications, they'll, they'll come into us. Um, we have our internal review committee that, that looks at uh, those grant applications. And the review committee will make a approval or denial of that. But this program, the application comes into us. We're interested in, in having funding go towards this project or company. Then we approve it to go over to Invest in Nebraska. That's when Invest in Nebraska engages the company. They're going to do the due diligence on the project. They're going to negotiate the terms of uh, the investment, but they're going to verify that the match is there or has been invested um, because this is done as a lump sum investment up front as opposed to on a reimbursement basis like these uh, grant programs that previously done. So those are the, the main um, early stage uh, startup related business innovation programs that you have I don't have a slide on it, but we do have a micro lending program where we provide funding for technical assistance and lending to micro lenders. Generally, that's more a traditional lifestyle business type of lending. This is more early stage, high tech, higher, uh, uh, higher, uh, higher tech uh, companies that are higher growth. So, um, with that, I, generally, I, I like to I know very little about the academic r and I think I have read about the others, but the academic, uh, uh, academic R&D uh, slide that you have there, uh, how, what, can you give us examples of instances that you have seen with, with faculty involved in those? And, and in particular, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to reconcile in my mind that the faculty would be starting a company and Kind of on, you know, on the in the middle or in both. It's, it, it seems. I just want to see has any faculty pull pull one of these uh, academic and R and D successful that so, you know. So the, so the industry, uh, the, the company is the applicant. In, in some cases, we've seen faculty uh, as part of you know, the company. Um, now their relationship with the university at the time is between them and the university, uh, but generally. Or a lot of the uh, a lot of the examples we have where industry comes to us at the same time they come to us with an application they're in the process of engaging the university in a sponsored research agreement or in some cases in the fee for service type of agreement with the university uh, you know just uh, general examples we've seen a lot uh, a lot of projects go through the processing center uh, you know, we've, we've even seen some go through the rake school things like that so it's been a broad range but Generally, uh, we're, we're engaged by a, and, and so there's no size requirements on, on uh, this program as far as size of the company. So we've seen, you know, the likes of ConAgra and Duckett's Wampler, very large companies that take advantage of this, all the way down to startups, but generally the, the person that's applying um, is not necessarily part of the back. It can be it can be earlier than the prototype. 
basic research. Uh, we generally like to see you know, in, in the milestones that that does have something for commercial potential, and then it can be even later. We've, we've matched uh, SDPR, SDPI, SDPI program with that, um, and our phase two or, or maybe have previously had SDPR, SDPR money about commercial. So that, that program has Once you submit that proof to us, then we can reimburse those 